Hey everybody, it's Lon Seiben and we're taking a look today at the new Lenovo Yoga 730. This is a new version of a laptop that I liked quite a bit last year called the 720. Uh, this is a two-in-one, so you can flip it out into a little display mode like this. You can put it into tablet mode if you want. Uh, it's got a touch screen, so you can uh, even use the Lenovo pen with it. It also works in tent mode, of course. This starts at around uh, $799, and this version is a little bit better in some ways in that it has a slightly faster processor and some improvements to its Thunderbolt ports, which we'll talk about a little later in the video here. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for what you're about to see, nor has anyone reviewed the content before I uploaded it. So let's get into it now and see what this is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. We've got a 13.3 inch display here, IPS with very nice viewing angles. It looks very similar to what we had last year. Uh, the resolution is 1080p. It does have a rather large bezel here at the bottom, and the reason for that is that when you have it uh, in tablet mode like this, your thumb has some place to rest. So uh, you can you know, use it on uh, the right or left hand here, and you've got a spot for your thumb to go where you don't accidentally have the screen go off. Uh, so just uh, keep that in mind. But overall, nice display. Uh, does pick up some fingerprints and stuff, so just be aware of that. But uh, all in, a very nice display and as good as last year's. Uh, this one at $799 comes with an i5-8250U processor. And these new 8th generation chips are now quad-core, where that same class of chip was dual-core before. So in certain circumstances, the laptop might be faster. Uh, you'll see that on our benchmarks, but you might notice that on applications that uh, utilize the cores effectively, or if you're trying to multitask, you might do a little better there. So it is a little faster than the prior variant. Uh, eight gigabytes of RAM on this one, DDR4 in dual channel configuration, but it is not upgradable. So you need to buy this in the configuration that you want as far as memory is concerned, because what you get when you buy it is all you're ever going to have. It is soldered into the uh, main board there. The storage, though, is upgradable. Uh, you can get uh, the starting point at 128 gigabytes with a NVMe M2 SSD. Uh, you can take it apart and upgrade that solid state drive if you want. So you do have some ability to add storage later as it gets cheaper. It is relatively lightweight, 2.62 pounds or 1.2 kilograms. And it's not quite as light as like an iPad or a dedicated tablet, for example, but it is pretty easy to hold. It doesn't get too heavy when you've got it in this tablet mode. It doesn't feel all that clunky. So I like the weight on it quite a bit. And they've done a nice job with this device, especially last year's model, which I thought was a really nice improvement. And I'm happy to see they haven't changed what was working uh, on this one here. I am hitting the little power button here by accident, though, when I'm flipping it around uh, quite a bit. So that's only going to put it to sleep, but it might be a little bit of an annoyance there. It is easy to push that. Battery life on this one, I'm looking at about uh, nine hours, give or take, and that's doing uh, basic kinds of tasks like web browsing and word processing and that sort of thing. Uh, you'll obviously see less battery life if you're pushing the processor harder, but uh, generally I found that the uh, battery life on here was good and will get you through an entire day without issue. And it's got a fast charging mechanism built into its USB-C charger, so uh, you can get it charged up a little faster than you might have seen on prior uh, generations of this class of laptop. It also has uh, wireless AC built in in a 2x2 two two configuration. Now they've made some other changes here, nothing big, but uh, they have upgraded the processor, as I mentioned. And the other thing that they added uh, are faster Thunderbolt ports. So these are now four-lane Thunderbolt 3 ports. They're also compatible with USB Type-C. Now, going to four lanes on the Thunderbolt ports means you might see better eGPU performance. And if you're not familiar with an eGPU, it's a box that allows you to use desktop graphics processors with laptops like this one that have the Thunderbolt 3 ports. And last year we did a pretty extensive review of an eGPU box with a GTX 1070 built in with the 720 as our uh, demoing laptop. It worked quite well. In fact, those two lane Thunderbolt ports were more than enough for that GTX 1070, but if you are doing uh, more intensive GPUs on your eGPU enclosure, having four lanes will be better than two, and this one provides that. Uh, Lenovo also now makes a compact graphics dock that has a GTX 1050 built in, 
Uh, so what you can do with these things is that when you're you know, done working with your laptop for the day and you want to come home and play some games, you can plug it into the, uh, the GPU or the dock with the GPU inside of it and get yourself pretty much desktop graphics performance out of a very compact laptop. It's really pretty cool to uh, see how that works and definitely check out that video if you're interested. Uh, these ports again also offer USB-C connectivity, so uh, any USB device will work with it. You can plug power into either one of these things and uh, both can output to external displays with the proper dongles. Uh, you will need to get yourself some dongles. I like to uh, carry this one around with me because it's got a USB port and HDMI out and also passes power through, but uh, just bear that in mind, you'll need to do that. This is our future here. Uh, you also have a headphone microphone combo jack on that side. Over here, you've got a regular USB 3.0 output and the power switch there. Now, one thing I wasn't crazy about are the speakers. That's a usual complaint of mine on these uh, little lightweight two-in-ones. So they are uh, on both sides of the bottom of the case here. So the sound will vary based on what you have the laptop resting on. Uh, so if you want better audio fidelity, I would say hook up some headphones to it. I love the keyboard on this. I love the keyboard on the 720. It is backlit. Uh, very nice to type on, uh, decent travel on it, and uh, again, just very well spaced and comfortable. I am also very happy with the trackpad. Uh, it's not mis misreading what I'm trying to do, so I'm not getting uh, clicks that I did not intend to make on it. It is very accurate and uh, feels very close to the one that I have on my MacBook, and I'm really quite happy with the performance out of the trackpad here. It feels like a very premium uh, input device. You also have a fingerprint reader here, so you can easily unlock the laptop to uh, get into it with your fingerprint. Uh, so that might be handy for some folks. There's also a, a small webcam built into the top of the laptop here. Nothing spectacular, but good enough for making calls and that kind of thing. Uh, there is a fan on this one. It does need to keep itself cool with that fan. So you want to keep this area clear when you are using it on the floor, for example. So I wouldn't suggest putting it on carpet. Uh, you also need to keep this area here clear in the back as well for the airflow. Uh, fan noise on the 720 was something I heard from a lot of people about. Some folks thought it was too loud uh, for them. Others were fine with it. And this is one of those subjective things that's hard to explain. But there is a fan. It is small, which means it will be loud. And uh, it's not, I, I think it's actually better than last year's version. But when you are taxing the computer, you are going to hear that fan spinning. And it is a more of a high pitched sound, but uh, not so distracting for me. But I think other folks who don't like fan noise uh, might find that to be an issue if you really like to work in a quiet room. Generally, it won't be on if you're in Microsoft Word or just using a web browser or something like that. But if you have stuff running in the background, uh, that, of course, will kick that fan on. Uh, I've also found with these computers, when you first get them, that they're doing updates and downloading things and having things processed in the background to get them all up to date. That might run the fan a little bit more in your initial experience with the computer than you might experience over the long term. So give it a week or two before you decide to get rid of it as far as the fan noise is concerned. I think it will level off. And uh, right now it's sitting here on my desk uh, happily idle and uh, no fan noise to be heard right at the moment. So let's move on to performance and see how the laptop does in real world kinds of tasks here. And we've got uh, Microsoft Word running with that newsletter template that I like to use. It's got a lot of text and graphics on there. As you can see, everything is very snappy and rendering in very quickly. It's probably a foregone conclusion at this point that any modern laptop should be able to do this stuff pretty well. And uh, certainly this one accomplishes those kinds of tasks for you. We also did some web browsing and we'll start off with my YouTube channel running a 60 frames per second 1080p video. Uh, everything was working just fine there. Uh, no significant issues. Uh, we also went over to NASA.gov to do some web browsing off of its AC wireless and there too we saw very good performance. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test we got a score of 164.1. Uh, that was running in Google Chrome and measures how well it can handle uh, JavaScript applications like the things we use on Google Docs and other websites. And that compares to 127.9 on the prior year model. So you can see how uh, maybe having a few more cores available to you in the processor uh, will result in better performance. It may not always be noticeable, but uh, there are some things where we can see the differences there between a dual core and a quad core chip. So let's move on now to some gaming. So we're going to kick things off with Grand Theft Auto 5 that's running at 720p on the lowest settings, and we're getting about 30 frames per second there. Uh, this is something we saw with the seventh generation Intel chips that they made some improvements to the built-in 
uh, GPU in the processor, so we are getting there. Uh, still not quite as good as you would get on a gaming laptop, of course, but you can uh, get something playable here, which was nice to see. And we also ran Rocket League at 1080p at the lowest settings, and we were getting frame rates above 40 frames per second there uh, at that 1080p resolution. So uh, again, we're seeing the performance that we gained in the prior generation of the Intel chips also playing out here. And then you have the benefit of the quad-core chip, so that might help games that make use of both the CPU and the GPU. And that will lead us to our next benchmark, which is the 3D Mark CloudGate test. And there we got a score of 8,766. And that score is significantly higher than last year's 720, uh, which came in at only 5,886. So we're seeing some performance improvements on the graphics test here for sure, but the bigger performance boost comes on the physics test, which is very much dependent on the CPU. And you can see the difference here going from two cores to four. It is a pretty significant increase in performance for games that uh, make use of the CPU in addition to the graphics side of the device. However, I really don't recommend these things as gaming devices, but uh, they are pretty good now at running some indie games and other uh, low impact things and some even AAA games at very low graphics settings and resolutions. However, when you are pushing the laptop this hard, you might see some thermal throttling. Uh, we ran the 3D Mark stress test and there we got a failing grade of 93.3%, passing is 97%. What this means is that uh, the hotter the laptop gets, you might see some performance decline a little bit to keep that processor from getting too hot. In this case, it got up to a temperature of 68 degrees Celsius or 153.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So when the fan can no longer keep the laptop cool, it's going to start running uh, slower just to keep it from heating up as much. And then once it gets leveled back out, you'll see the performance jump back up again. So you might see frame rates drop and then go back up again, depending on the kinds of throttling that are going on. And that's one of the trade-offs that you'll encounter when you do have something thin and light like this. It really uh, is hard to get uh, the heat out of it and uh, throttling will often be a result of that. But at 93%, you're not going to see it all too often, but it probably will be very prevalent when you're playing high-end games on it, which it really wasn't designed to do. And of course, we ran the Jellyfish test file on Kodi to see how well it would do with a high-end HEVC 140 megabit per second 10-bit 4K video. And we had no drop frames and a really good performance out of the laptop for that kind of stuff. So I think you should have no issues playing back media on this device. And of course, you you can always hook up a uh, 4K display through one of those Thunderbolt ports there as well. So you have some good options for docking this, but uh, also some very good usability as a functional two-in-one laptop. And I really like the 720, and I really like this one. This is not a huge upgrade over the prior edition, at least insofar as you know what a standard business or casual computer user might notice. But I do think people that were looking for better Thunderbolt ports are going to get it this year. And if you do uh, a lot of CPU-intensive stuff, the quad-core processor on here will be a significant upgrade over the prior edition that had a dual core processor. And overall, I think this is a very good value, especially at its entry point at $799. You can always put in more storage later if you need it. And I think you'll be quite pleased with the performance that uh, you'll get out of this as we were during the course of our testing on it. Love to hear your feedback. Let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.